Hey everyone, it's Mike. Um, I'm getting back to my onboarding breakdowns. I've been busy for a few weeks and working on a few different projects. Um, so I've got one lined up today that's not really going to be a blind run. I'm going to test this to see if it makes the walkthrough go a little bit smoother. I also did record it once yesterday and it was raining and I have metal roof in my office out here so it was super loud when I went back to watch the recording. So we're going to jump in. Um, this is Hop by Wix. It's a Lincoln Bio project or product I would say. And there's some differenti differentiating features about it that I really like. Um, I've been partnering and working with this different brands in this space um, recently. And so since I've been doing it, I wanted to actually take a look and walk through it uh, because there are some different aspects to it. So sign up process wise is pretty straightforward. Um, they want me to have a Wix account. So let's say, all right, let's just say, I didn't know you could do this. If you ever need to make like, use the same email for multiple accounts, you can do this. Do a plus and then at Okay, so pretty basic sign up screen so far. So this requires a Wix account. It's redirecting me, so now I have to create a Hop account, which feels extra. Um, they should be connected here. Um, and maybe that's just phrasing. So it wants my display name. And it's asking me for a URL for this one. Let's see if it's available. So that's, it says account, it's really just creating my, like LinkedIn bio page essentially and spinning up my, my site. Um, this is fine to ask, you could always ask it later, but um, you could also always skip it. So it's not a big deal. On a big screen, I will say that split with the images sliding down and moving wanted to pull my eyes to the right and it was actually kind of hard for especially my peripherals to see that on the left side so I might have wondered why I wasn't getting anywhere or doing anything or I did wonder that actually in my head um, even though I've done this a few times so like the spacing there on wider screens and wider browser windows I think could be thought about so personalize your page choose the actions you want to add to your page so the term action and I had mentioned this before um, it's a little confusing to me when you're talking about content. So like blog posts, I guess the action would be to read the blog post, but really that's not an action itself. A button is action, submitting a form is an action, buying a product is an action, I guess. So I think this is just terminology they're using for the features that you put on your page or the components or widgets or whatever you want to call it. Um, let's see, I don't have a product. Let's see, we do a feature blog post and a list of blogs. And then there's like a list of blogs as a grid instead of like this list. That's just a list of links. Uh, so they have events, they have pricing plans, like if you want to sell services on here, booking services that probably go together, um, different ways to display all those things. This could get messy later. You have like a single pricing plan or you have a list of pricing plans. And I bet users will end up trying to do too much on a single, especially on like a mobile link page like this. But that's also a little bit on the user not to not to mess that up. Um, series of videos, outfits. So they've thought about the different verticals and types of users and influencers that are going to use these things. And they've really built in a lot of options here. It takes a while to get down to the bottom. Um, so they might eventually think about some kind of filtering or use cases or even curating the actions that they think make sense based on maybe the user tells them what they're going to use it for. Let's go ahead and spin up this page. So these, I see that they're free. These are the different templates that I can use. This arrow is hidden to me. So is the one on the left back here, but it's not even available yet. There it goes. So that one lit up. This one on the right is hard to see on top of all these. That's probably just an accessibility thing more than anything else. Uh, premium designs are a little bit flashier, have bigger images. 
they generally look more premium to me. Um, there's some animations and things going on too. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is a decent selection. Let's go with this guy. So this is a long list of fields for me to navigate. And again, when I'm on a bigger browser, those links are really far away from the preview of what I'm looking at. Um, and I'm guessing because they design mobile first, but it is worth thinking about the desktop. Um, and how that space is kind of like reactive to that. So I'm going to put in a few of these. I like that it lets you use the username instead of having to type your whole URL for everything. I like that I can just put my URL and I don't have to type the whole HTTPS or dub 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 or whatever. Um, we'll do that for now. We don't have to spend too much time on this, but this is Everybody does this a little bit differently. Oh, you can also drag and rearrange the order it looks like. Or you should be able to. That's what those usually indicate. Maybe that's broken for me right now. Okay. Well, you, you theoretically should be able to with those little dots and that hand that shows up over them. I think that's just a bug right now. But everybody does this a little bit differently. You can choose which ones you want. You can just put a URL in. I like the ones that understand what the URL is and match the icon to it. Um, I don't like when they make you choose too many options in terms of how the icons look and everything, but that's a balance with flexibility. So this is a pretty solid way to get your links in there. It's just a lot of looking and choosing. Add advanced search. Yeah, search is a good differentiator for this too because the current option, especially for people who publish a lot of content, if you go to the link in bio, like you have to scroll and try to match the image that you saw to that image on the page, at like which is a very small grid. Being able to search for something is pretty powerful. The, I don't, you'll see in a minute. I don't love the way that they implement this or the way it's set up, but there's value in it. It's taking a while to load. Okay, it's says it's ready. So that's a pretty easy process to get here. Let's look at the editor. That's the next step. Okay, so we have Hot Pro. They asked me to upgrade now. Um, I can say maybe later and keep on going with what I'm working on. We have this Pro Feature in Use banner up here too, so you can see what that is. I like that they tell you this before you put all your work into it. And that's a pro layout. They actually give you the option to remove it if you want, or just upgrade now. And I know that um, you can actually just upgrade. This button's always up here, or in the publish flow that you can upgrade to. So let's let's look through this. By default, it's gone to actions. Actions are kind of like sections or widgets, like we talked about earlier. So they have placeholder content here. Um, so if you want to start with that, that's where they start you. A lot of people I know actually start in design. So you can change your background to some of these places. You have your theme colors right here. And it's kind of cool that you can actually choose from color palettes that are built into it. This isn't different or too different from like WordPress, for example, where we have styles now. Um, or you can customize it, the different colors that are in here. Move my face a little bit. That's a, that's a good amount of options. I don't know that I would even ask the user to think about how errors or success messages render on there, but I think that's like if somebody buys something or subscribes or whatever. So eventually they might want to do that, but I'd probably lean towards just making it look good and not making a net, another decision for the user who's doing this. So I do see you have to apply. I think it did auto save, but um, if you have a background, we can replace the hero image. Looks like you have the Wix Media library thing going on. I can do a picture of my kids, or I can choose something like this. Move my face out of the way, see what it does. Okay, let's scroll up. So it looks fine. 
So by default, these designs look pretty good. Now, the design part of it, I don't feel like I need a tweak. I kind of like the fonts, I kind of like the colors, and we don't need to go through that because we can go through that other times. Um, this is really focused on onboarding, so let's think about what we need to launch. I'm gonna go back to those actions, and let's look at this read my latest blog post. And so you have like some actions here that you can do. Duplicate it, you can change it to display as a card without having to open. So that, that placeholder content is way different than what I'd normally put in there. So now I need to go back, I can either click the pencil to edit or I can edit here. That actions button might be helpful later, that menu. So for me, I might just put recent thoughts. I might change it to display as a button and open as a card. Look, you can choose what you want the button behavior to do if it just goes straight to the URL, if it um, does that. And then, okay, so this is the placeholder content that's here now. I can edit it, which gives me lots of options to manually control it, or I can click change. Um, let's see what I wrote recently. So let's just grab my recent post and put this in here and see what kind of job it does pulling that in. So it's here. So it pulled my site logo instead of my featured image. But I can replace that if I want to. We'll leave it for now. I'm not too worried about perfecting it. Um, and it's pulling everything like you would in a social profile kind of, or a social media post. I don't know that you even, oh, you can turn that off so you don't need that. Um, you can show the website that it's coming from. You can change your CTA. And then you see the preview in real time of what it's gonna look like for that user on mobile, which is cool. Um, so I don't have to save it this time. I can just click back and it's auto-saved. I will say that's kind of a lot of work just to edit the content here. I would almost expect you to be able to like change it in the preview, um, but that might be really confusing if you can change some things and not others. So let's go back to actions. Oh, I don't know what I just did. Did I not save it? Okay. Let's go to latest blog posts and see what that editing looks like. Ooh. Okay, so you have ways to display your list, which is cool. You can do like a carousel if you want. Uh, and right now it has, so it has settings and how it's handled, but then, okay, so now that's like four times the work as editing that one link before. Um, so maybe, what does it look like? This is, yeah, this is, so they have the placeholder content. It'd be nice if it was just an easy way to add or replace, and maybe that's what I do is just trash these and add these in there. The other thing is it might be nice if you just put your blog URL or your blog feed and it let you pull posts from there without having to manually go copy and paste back and forth. Not that that's a lot of work, but it is kind of a lot of work in comparison, and especially when you're just trying to get in here and get things going. Um, so we can finish that. We can check out the other actions if we want to. The, I think the editing is mostly the same for all this. Now, I'm gonna show you real quick before I try to go through the publish flow there are some things in here. So it's just telling me I haven't published yet because the page isn't live. So let's leave. Um, so the things I wanted to show you about how this actually works. So we had chosen to add search to it. If I go to search, you actually have to add a link and add a keyword. It's optional, but you can add keywords to make it easier for people to find that link. So this is like if you're YouTube, like if you're a YouTuber or you've got a podcast or something and you want to make it easy for the people who are listening or watching to remember like one thing. So if I said like contest or um, giveaway or whatever, like radio stations do this a lot. The bad thing about this is you have to manually enter every link that you want to show up in search and it doesn't currently detect any of the links that you already put on your profile. Um, I would love to see it say like, hey, you added your social links to these channels, we're gonna make all of your links in your profiles, like your posts and everything searchable. Or at least if you have a website with content on it, we can make that searchable and take some of that manual work out of it. 
because this will be a really powerful feature when you start driving like um, traffic and you start getting users engaged and you can drive a lot of action from this, but it's also a lot of setup work. Um, I'm not going to get into the other features that they have because they're not relevant to just launching the link in bio and the onboarding process. But if I go back to this and I want to edit it, essentially the last step in this flow is to go ahead and publish and they're going to prompt me again and then I'll go through the upgrade and then it will be live. Um, I don't know, actually now that I'm looking at it, where the domain options are. If it by default is going to be hop or, okay, there is a search box in here I missed. But again, you have to add those manually. Um, I don't know if I can customize my URL or not. Verified badge, I can put a bio, header description, that's just more content. It is a little weird that all the other content on the page is in actions, and then there's like a little bit of the page content here. Um, yeah, the domain is something I'd like to be able to do something with, but that, that's maybe just not in here yet, and they're going to use my username or something as a, a subdirectory of hop. So that's okay. Not a super critical piece right this second, but I'm sure it'll come in the future. That's the walkthrough. It's a simple product. I thought it was really interesting how they did. They baked in all those actions, because that doesn't exist in a lot of the Lincoln Bio project, products right now, at least an easy way to integrate them. There's also some other elements to this, like... Um, they have these things called pre-rolls, which are things that can pop up that a user would see before they get to their link destination. So like if they clicked on a blog post and you wanted to capture a subscription before they got into reading it, you can do that. Um, there's also landing pages, so you can build out mobile landing pages for this and actually run campaigns to them and have them exist in here. And they have a CRM piece that lets you keep track of subscribers and things too. So it's a pretty big bang for your buck compared to like Linktree or some of the others and definitely worth considering.